Thank you, Stren. Well, it, it's a great privilege for me to be able to take part in this important event this afternoon. Um, as Stren has said, I've taken a long-standing interest in the human rights situation in Iran, and I'm afraid there can be no doubt that Iran's theocratic dictatorship is widely recognised as, as well as leading state sponsor of terrorism. That was expressly acknowledged by the Vice President of the United States, Saint Mike Pence. And this is a point I've spoken out on in Parliament, following representations by my British Iranian constituents. Since its inception, the theocratic regime has maintained its grip on power, both for using internal repression within country, but also via the spread of extremism and hatred and state terrorism abroad. Both of these are a key part of their approach to staying in power. Analyzing the connection between the two pillars of the regime is central to understanding Iran's motives and tactics and their methodology for seeking to maintain and shore up their position. As uh, Struan has said, the regime is heavily involved in fostering instability and conflict and terrorism in Syria, Lebanon, Iraq, Yemen, and Gaza. They have, for example, supplied huge amounts of arms to proxies like Hezbollah. They are also known to be providing assistance to Hamas, Al-Qaeda, and the Taliban. My British Iranian constituents in Barnet tell me the mullahs are also using terrorism to target Iranian dissidents abroad including pro-democracy movements such as National Council, for instance, in Iran. This is a worrying extraterritorial application of the brutal domestic crackdown on popular protests that other speakers have already highlighted this afternoon. So I'm afraid it's not just in the war zones of the East that the impact of Iran's activities on terrorism is being felt. As you have heard this afternoon, an Iranian diplomat is due to stand trial in Belgium, accused of involvement in a 2018 terror plot. Iran and its IRGC are a threat in many places around the world. They are ruthlessly suppressing the democratic aspirations of the Iranian people at home, and they're causing real threats to other countries as well. It's shocking that the UN embargo on conventional weapons sales to Iran is due to expire in just a few days' time. I hugely regret that. I'd very much like to see a tougher approach to the regime by the UK government. There is, for example, a clear case to prescribe the IRGC as a terrorist organisation, and I'd urge the UK government to do this. I'd also call on the UK government to engage with Mrs. Rajavi and NCRI, who are working so hard to move Iran towards a free and democratic future. And so I'd like to welcome the statement we just heard read from Mrs. Rajavi. I think it gives, um, I hope that it would give hope of the future, whilst the situation in Iran is very grave and the people there are suffering greatly. I hope that sometime soon we will see reform, we will see democracy, we will see respect for human rights in Iran and to give it a free and democratic future that people want and that they deserve. Thank you. Mm -hmm.